So welcome back to another FIFA 21 topic video. Today we are talking about features that should be added into FIFA 21. Now I've been taking a look at some old FIFA games and I've been taking a look at some of their old features and today's video is going to be based on those old features and I think EA should bring them back into FIFA 21 because they were pretty good at the time and they changed them for whatever reason. Please let me know what you think of these features if you want them back in FIFA. For me, I want them back but it could be just me that misses these old features. So even though we've got over 167,000 subscribers on the channel, we've still got a big majority of you guys watching the videos but not subscribed. If you want to know all the latest FIFA 21 news, this will be the best spot. Make sure you subscribe today and join the other side. And if you want to buy some of the best real life Ultimate Team cards, you can customize these however you want. You can get them as a gift or for yourself. Make sure you check out the link in the description and use my code VAPEX for 10% off. So in FIFA 20 career mode, we saw a massive change to the way you could create a manager. Now this is a nice system. It's a, one of the best features about FIFA 20 career mode. And you can basically have a lot of presets for your faces. Uh, you can also have the skin colors and all that kind of stuff. You can change whatever you want, including the outfits. But who thought that this feature called the import face feature was going to be game face? Now, unfortunately, it wasn't. I think it's basically if you have a face from another save, you can import it in. A lot of people before Fever 20 came out thought this was game face, where you can create your own face and import it into the game. And this was a feature in old FIFA games, and unfortunately, it got removed over the last couple of years. And uh, I think now is the right time to bring it back. With the smartphones, you can take a photo, upload it to an app, and send it to, you know, the game or something. I don't know. They can make it work now easier than they could ever before. Before it was like a web page where you upload images and then it would generate a face. Sometimes it didn't even look like you, sometimes you looked pretty bad. But now with the cameras and stuff on your phones, they can they can think of a system where you can look really, really accurate. And this would be nice in manager crew mode where you can make a guy look exactly the way you want him to look like, look like you. And then you can take the field even in player crew mode with a guy that looks like you. And maybe you can create fake players and stuff using the import face feature where you can create a guy that looks like a celebrity. You know, there's plenty of stuff they can do with this kind of feature. And I think going forward, it needs to come back into the game, especially with the technology we've got now. There's no excuse, really. The current systems are not bad, but you're limited to creating a guy using presets. And uh, a lot of people would love to be themselves in the game as well. And Game Face would allow you to do that. So we are currently on the FIFA 14 World Cup mode. And as I was playing it, I noticed a difference with the goal kick camera. EA back then actually let you have a different camera angle and it let you actually move the camera as well. You probably do remember this feature, but it was changed over the last couple of years. Someone thought it was a good idea to actually change the camera angle so it doesn't actually move in FIFA 19 and FIFA 20. Now, I don't mind the elevation of the camera angle, but I like the way it used to move. Now, you might say that the old style was very flat and it is a very flat camera angle, so I think Pez has done the best job. So basically, it's got that elevated vision, so you can see the whole field, see your players all the way up to the top, but also the camera angle moves for you, so if you want to put it to the left, you just swing the camera, and you can easily, you know, direct your passes. For me, it's always been a little bit more difficult to pick left and right passes in goal kicks ever since they changed that camera angle. So I think EA should copy Pez and add their camera system into our game as like a brand new feature that gives us that option to move it. So next up, we're going to spend a couple minutes on this practice arena. And one of the features that I think took a massive decline over the last few FIFA games is, of course, this practice arena. Because in FIFA 14, it was fantastic. And then slowly, slowly, we started to get a very, very bare bones experience. And in FIFA 20, half the time, the practice arena glitches out, doesn't even work properly, and it has no features at all. It wasn't always like this. In FIFA 14, if you pressed the start button on the practice arena, it loaded up a few different options. I'm sure you guys have seen this by now, you know, I do talk about this a lot. But you had your standard one-on-one, -on -one, which is what we were doing with the keeper. But then you had practice set piece. So if you weren't any good at set pieces, instead of going into a game, instead of doing those uh, training drills and stuff, skill games, you can just go to the practice arena load up a preset so you can have 11 attackers, 4 attackers, 5 defenders or 11 defenders. You, so you can make this as realistic or unrealistic as you want. You can play as the attacking team or the defending team. And uh, you can also be the goalkeeper if you want. Change the camera angle as well. But you load it up and uh, you place the ball wherever you want it. And basically you can just spend hours and hours mastering your free kicks. So in this case we were the defending team. So even if you want to learn how to defend free kicks this is a good feature as well. But of course, if you wanted to be the attacking team, you could also do that as well. Let's see if we can nail this one. Yep, beautiful. Haven't lost the touch at all. Moving on to the next feature, you had your practice match, which is also another cool feature that they could bring into career mode. Uh, basically, you can play a practice match with different formations, different players, test it out. 
Uh, you can also have four attackers versus 11 defenders, so you can do like attacking scenarios to help you train, I don't know, create new ways to attack teams and stuff. I don't know, I'm just trying to think of stuff off the top of my head. But in FIFA 14, the touches were very heavy as well. As you can see, when they're sprinting, the touches are very heavy. But basically, you can just create your own scenarios. It's pretty cool. And this would help you a lot if it was a feature in career mode where you can test out different formations, different players in different positions without wasting game time and uh, wasting, you know, matches in the Premier League and stuff. Now, it also had create set piece. Now, this one was also a cool feature because you can... Uh, do presets based on different locations so you can do practice corners as well or practice uh, things around the box so let's say you pick a spot and you create a new set piece you can um, record runs for the players so if the ball or you get a free kick in this scenario in a game uh, you can create these runs here and the players if you load up the preset in the match are going to be making these runs so let's say there's a certain you know exploit you can do where if you make certain runs uh, they're going to have a higher chance of scoring. You can just load up a preset like this where all the players attack the box and then basically you can test it out to see if it's any good. So this one was a bit of a fluke. As you can see, the ball went straight to one of my attackers who made the run, but we hit the post. Now this is stuff that you can't even do in FIFA 20 because you can't create these kinds of set pieces. But you can spend hours tinkering with the runs and stuff to create a set piece that could really be an exploit in the game. Now I use this more for corners because you can put certain players outside the box and have them sit there ready for the scraps and you can put your tallest players in the box. So we'll see what we have here. So when there's a corner and you've got like tall guys, you can make runs in the box, you can record those, and you can put your better shooters, your midfielders, or your smaller guys outside the box, just sitting there, you know, making a little run here to collect any uh, clearances from the defenders in the box. And you can also put a guy on the front post there. Pretty useful stuff. And then when you save it, and it happens in the game where you have this scenario, the players will make the runs for you and you can see if you can score. See, we've got the scraps there, and my guy was already there, but a defender was there as well. But you know what I mean, like, I used to use this a lot. Now, all of this stuff that I've shown you today was a part of the practice feature, and this is like a whole game mode in its own thing, but now, no one even looks at the practice arena. And uh, basically, it's had a massive decline for no reason too. Why can't they throw these features into career mode where you can do practice matches, create set pieces, free kicks as well, you know, that kind of stuff. So. It's something that needs to come back because it was one of the best features about a FIFA game and then someone decided that it needed to go. So there's another feature here that works very similar to what we just spoke about with the goal kicks, but this time it affects the free kicks in your own half. Those defensive free kicks that occur from like offsides and stuff, pretty much you're not able to swing the camera angle for those free kicks as well. And I'm not really a fan of what they've done with FIFA 20's one, so we're going to take a look at some examples right now. Alright, so we are back in FIFA 20 and this is what a goal kick in your own box looks like. As you can see, that camera angle is useless because you can't see up ahead and you also have to, you know, sort of guess where you're aiming, like the goal kick feature. I feel like you don't have much control over the passing with these kinds of features. If you want to go left, you have to point left. If you want to go right, you've got to go right. But most of the time, this camera angle forces you to go short because you can't really see what's ahead of you. And I think they should bring it back to the other camera angle where you can swing it around and you can see the players close to you and your strikers up the top there as well. I don't know. This is maybe a personal preference of mine, but I used to prefer how they did it before they changed it. So this is a free kick in your own half at the moment in FIFA 19. It's not very good because, you know, you can't really see much of the field. And it's the same thing in FIFA 20. Uh, they've kept this camera angle. I don't really like it. It's pretty hard to know where you're passing the ball. And half the time, I don't even know what I'm doing with this. But in FIFA 19, they gave us the option to have that camera angle. But if you didn't like it, you could also press the L3 button and get that old school FIFA one where you can swing the camera around and you're actually behind the free kick taker. As you can see, you just swing it left and right. You can see up the field. You can see your wingers, your striker as well. And I think it makes it a little bit easier to play those uh, passes from those uh, deep free kicks. There is one flaw to it, and uh, it's the fact that it's very flat looking, so they could elevate it as well. But I think Pez has done a good job with this because they've elevated the camera. You still get that behind the player view where you can turn the camera around, and then you can easily put the passes into the corners where your wingers can collect it, and you can go from there. So I think EA should in FIFA 21 either bring back that option where you can press L3, or make it much better and copy Pez and do it their way. And this is also another example. This is like a deep free kick where you want to pump the ball into the box, try and get a header, try and get a goal. In FIFA 20, this is the camera angle. Very useless because I can't even see the box. At least in Pez, it's got that behind the player view. So you know where you're going to pass the ball when you turn the camera. And at least you can just sort of direct it in a general area, you know. It's not perfect because obviously it's long distance free kicks. But it's better than not being able to see the actual box that you're trying to put the ball into. 
Now continuing on with some practice arena talk, who remembers the different kinds of settings you could get with the practice arena? This is before EA, you know, steadily declined it. But before, it wasn't just a training ground and that was it for the whole year. You would have like different settings each year. You could have like a Tokyo look. I think that was like Fever 12. You could have like a training ground look, but a run down one where the walls are like high concrete walls and stuff. There was also ones at the beach like FIFA 14's ones where you can see the water. And now we just get that standard training ground and, you know, there's really no scenery to it. I would have even liked to have an option to do practice arena inside the stadium. I think FIFA 17 was like that. And FIFA 16 was unique as well because it had a stadium background feature where you could change the stadiums for the practice arena. So if you wanted to do it in the old Trafford Stadium, you could have it there. If you wanted to change it after and put it in the Juventus Stadium, you could do that. And it basically gave you a lot of freedom. FIFA 16 really had a good stadium background feature. But nowadays, you know, the practice arena, it's just declined so much and they can revive it by bringing back the old features that they took out. Like having different practice arena venues every time you boot it up would be pretty cool to look at. So those are some features EA should add into FIFA 21. I doubt it's going to happen, but you never know, maybe in FIFA 22 or FIFA 23. If you need something else to watch, make sure you check out this FIFA video. Hit the card in the middle, it'll take you right there. I'll see you next time.